Alright, good day all. My name is Noel Allen. I'm a part of Team 22, along with my teammates Uber Mantovani and Juan Diego Stepa. And today our team will be going into detail about the content of our two-part project, which is based on the analysis of a cytokine mechanism and the synthesis of a four-part mechanism. So tracing back to Tracing back to ancient history, mechanism of machine science dates back to archaeological time. Some examples of these mechanisms can be found in the drawings of remnants discovered by archaeologists. Uh, animal traps for hunting were one of the first machines built by man. This is followed by fire starting machines that utilize ro rotational mechanisms to produce fire. Uh, the creations of prehistoric man can be found can be said to be inspired by nature. This is, this is found one example of the ships that were modeled in duck-like in duck shapes to mimic the floating capabilities of an actual duck. All right, so fast forwarding to the 19th century, we can see that mechanism development has plays a contributing role in the development of robotics. In the top right is Nikola Tesla, demonstrating this fabrication of a remote control robot. And beating up to the mid 20th century, General Motors establishes or acquires the first general arm robot, which is the, the Unimate. Uh, this is pretty much a vast improvement from the simple lever constructions of primitive man to simplify their daily labor tasks. So in present times, mechanism development has pretty much transcended to to be a vital component in the development of prosthetics. All right, so focusing more on what we did for our project, for position analysis, specific equations were derived for the slide crank mechanism uh, based on the given data. And from there, we kind of played with the numbers to emulate the, the, motion, the trajectory motion of the coupler. Up next will be Juan to discuss a little bit more in depth about the analysis of our project. Hi everyone, uh, I'm going to focus now on the uh, velocity and acceleration analysis that uh, we did for our project. Um, to accomplish this, uh, we also start with the loop closure equations just like in the positional analysis. Uh, basically take that, uh, separate it into components and uh, we differentiate it. As uh, velocity is the change of position over time, we differentiate the uh, loop equation to get uh, the equation that you see on the right. We take that equation uh, using a matrix uh, to solve two uh, equations. We find the uh, missing unknowns, and with those unknowns, we can again use the low uh, closure principle with uh, the vectors to uh, find the other unknowns left. Uh, and that's basically the same thing that we do with the acceleration as the acceleration is the change of velocity over time, we just differentiate the, these equations one more time uh, to accomplish that task. Um, for our project, our crank velocity, which uh, the crank is R2, uh, it's three radians per second, and the acceleration was zero radians per second. So as you can see, uh, the two vectors that I stated before, they add up to a certain point. And uh, using vector addition, that's how we find the uh, unknowns there. Um, and then in the, this is the design uh, of our uh, project on SolidWorks. And as you can see, added in is the coupler that uh, Noel showed us the, the motion of it in an earlier slide. Um, applying our mechanism to the real world, a slider crank is a very important mechanism in today's world. It has many different applications, such as a scotch yoke, which is used in uh, gas and oil pipelines. Uh, we also have a hand pump, which has been used for hundreds of years, for example, to pump water from a well. And most importantly, uh, the internal combustion engine is a, uh, an inline slider crank mechanism. Um, it is probably the most used mechanism in the world, over a billion uses, because it's in um, all cars, all uh, most boats, most trains, uh, all use this uh, internal combustion engine. 
Uh, some of the advantages are that it has a high weight to power ratio. Uh, it has a more efficiency than a steam engine, which is obviously why we are using an internal combustion engine more often. And it's so commonly used that it's very easy to refuel. On the downside, uh, there's a, a lot of air pollution that comes from it. It's uh, something that we're trying to transition out of is to get rid of this pollution that's caused by so much of this. Uh, the vibration in the engine uh, causes a bit of inefficiency as well. That's a downside to the, uh, the output that we can get from the engines. And uh, there's not many different substances that can be used in these engines as you need a certain substance to cause a combustion to ha happen. And the fuel, uh, we're, we're consuming so much of the fossil fuels that we're running out of the fuels needed for it. Um, uh, we have a SolidWorks uh, animation, a real world um, design that we had for our project. Uh, we used the, the same specifications as uh, were issued to us for our project. Uh, with some slight changes for the real world application, uh, the radius of the fourth link and the first link were changed uh, to adjust it to be in line as is in an internal combustion engine. So here you see that the uh, crankshaft, that is the second link, that is the driving force, and it spins around, uh, causing the slider, this, the piston being the slider, moving in and out, and causing the motion uh, that occurs in an internal combustion engine. In Romanto 1, I will be talking about the mechanism synthesis. For this part of the building, we have to do a synthesis of a four bar mechanism. For this part, the professor gave us a unique setup with different points that later we're using it to get the A0 and B0 points, which will be the, the base points of the frame of the, of the four bar mechanism. Also, we need to get all the R and, and radius which will give us the distance, the distance or the length of each link. So with, as soon as we get these links, we know how will be, uh, what, which will be the behavior of this mechanism. So as soon as we did the synthesis, I came up that was a double cram mechanism. Why? Because we have the shortest link right in the frame. This is the formula to get the A0 points, as well as X or Y, also, this formula was used for B, just changing the values. This is we are using AX2 or AX3, we will be using BAEX2 and BX3. Also, as soon as we get the A0 and B0 values, we can start doing all the, all the research and applying all the formulas for the radius or, or length of the links. So, with this, we have four, ra four distances to cover, so with different points. We just will be changing right in order how it's this in the equation for the other points. Mechanism applications. For this application, I found a really good application for this mechanism, which was a, this is a food grinder. So the main reason is that we have almost the same behavior because we have a smallest, uh, the smallest pulley and the biggest pulley right here. So, but in our mechanism, instead of using bolts, we're using the links. Well, the main reason is that as soon as we apply all the movement or the motor in the smallest pulley, this will create a change in the torque and will move the biggest, the, the biggest pulley, so this will make work the, the grinder. Right now, also we have to do a mechanism animation. For this part, I tried to came up with the grinder but I, I just put the two pulley, how does it work? I just did the small, the small pulley and the big pulley. So as soon as we, we, I apply all the, the motor in the small one, so the big one can start moving and generate the same movement as the, as the foot grinder. Like you said, the small pulley was, the, the motor was playing the link R2, which is the, the small one. As well, the R1 will be the link fixed to this point. The conclusion the objective of this work was to evaluate different type of mechanism as a crank slider or four bar mechanism. So for this, for the crank slider, we have to do analysis and animation as well. But for the second part of the project that was the four bar, we had just to do the synthesis. 
The main reason of this was to try to come up with all the theoretical concepts that we're dealing in class and try to get a, a real-world application.